Hi guys, it's Mark from AnyPond.com, your trusted resource in the UK for ponds and water features. Today's video is the September update at Pond College. We've got some exciting news about events coming up over the next couple of months. We've also got the build a pond that we built last month and you can have a look at that. So before I start, we're shooting this early. So it's actually Tuesday this week and this video has come out on the Friday because we're actually going to Chelsea on Thursday and Friday this week. But I thought I'd give you the opportunity to have a look around the college gardens. We've got some new features for you and uh, I thought I'd start with the stack slate. Nothing's really changed on that, but it's still looking good. We've got the plant ponds, the plants are starting to go over. We've got some lovely Serencinas here and some sundew plants. These are the carnivorous ones. As you can probably see, there's been some damage by magpies, but don't they look fantastic? We've got some lovely sundew plants here. There's a bit of a damselfly or something there, bless. Um, but everything has to eat. So what we've got here is we've got peat and rainwater. And that's what the Serencinas, they like. So what we've got here is we've got a big open space that we're going to put in another container or another garden building of some description. Here's the lockdown pond. The fish are still hiding from the heron attack a few weeks ago. We've still got the aeration system in there to stop the heron from being able to attack the fish. The fish are responding a little bit to human activity with the food. They are, a lot of them are hanging around down there. Let me put some food in and see if they come up. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not 100% sure. There we go, that goldfish is being brave. Well done. So when you've had a heron attack, it does take the fish a little bit of time to get used to humans. So feeding them in an area where they feel safe and in trying to encourage them back to a feeding station is always a good thing. But as you can see, there's a little bit of activity going on here. The fish are still in there, so we have got the fish, but it's just like humans. If there was a T-Rex running around, you would be hiding out of the way because there's something trying to eat you. And it's exactly the same with these fish. A heron's been eating them, but there's a lot of places for them to hide. There's a lot of weed out here that we've left to grow to stop the heron. But as you can see, there's lots of fish still in there and they're looking good in this autumn sunshine. The plants are looking good. There's a couple of plants going over like the typha, they're starting to go brown. The Sagittaria is starting to go brown. Some people have said to me, what do you do? How do you encourage the fish to come back up? Well, it's just, you've got to gain their confidence. They don't know whether you're trying to eat them like the heron's been trying to do. So you've just got to gain their trust. And it's very similar to trying to train your fish to come and hand feed. So here I am in Charlotte's garden. You can see the small pond, Charlotte's pond is looking really good. The plants are still hanging on. Lovely, lovely plants. The forget-me-not is coming back into flower. Really good. Looking marvellous. We've got the mini fairy falls. This is a nano pondless waterfall. We've got a video on the YouTube channel of when we created this. So now we come on to the Zen Garden. As you can see, there's still not much going on in the Zen Garden, but it will be a project that we start to develop over the winter. Where I'm standing, again, will be all developed. Got the lovely bamboo. Now we're gonna get a little bit more time to actually develop the floating Zen Garden. And hopefully we'll get a bit of inspiration from Chelsea. Here's uh, the NRG waterfall. There's been a little bit of work done on this. starting to look good. It's coming along nicely. Let's have a look at some of the plants. The last few hanging on. Needs a little bit of weeding. And now we want to go over to the Builder Pond Pond. And we're actually calling this the Builder Pond because it was a great day. And if you were here, thanks for coming. Have a look at this. It is looking fantastic in this autumn sunshine. 
We've got a 40 inch bowl at the top there that Kenny opened the actual cutout section a little bit wider just to give it a bit more of dramatic feel. So what we actually did is we came together and we built this pond within one day. So this is the small pond kit with a six foot stream and also a 40 inch or one meter bowl that was put in the bank there just to create a little bit of elevation. So what the guys have been doing is they've been doing a little bit more work around these features. Here's the spillway bowl and basin feature, a little bit more blue slate or the aqua blues. If you didn't see last week's video, we've got the water feature with fire. That's looking good. If you want more information about how to install this, check out last week's video. Bit more of a bridge gone in. And there's the pondless waterfall made out of the aqua blues and the video will be coming out very soon. Also this month, we've actually had the wall feature put in and finished. So what we've got here is we've got two stainless steel blades. We've got some mystery drips, mystery waterfalls coming down the Lysomachia and then another blade just to make it look a little bit more attractive and irrigate the plants. But that's looking really good. What we've got here is we've got the latest addition to the sandbox. This was built by one of the contractors that came in yesterday to have a play and that feature there, it looks great. And a lot of people on the channel would love this in their garden. There's nothing wrong with it, apart from a visual aspect of the foam, but that will dull down with time once the moss gets growing. What we've got here is we've got the sand boxes and these are waterfall boxes. On the 16th of October, you can come and play in the sand boxes. This one was actually built with the builder pond so a couple of people broke out and came out and built this fantastic look at that and then what we had is we had luke come in the sandbox a couple of days later and put his first feature in and look at this for a first feature it's amazing really what you can do once you've got the fundamentals once you've got that framework and one of the key things that we do with these events is we teach you the Pong College system and the evaluation. So what you can actually do is rank your own water feature using that particular system. So you can actually look at and recognize naturalistic water features. So during the event, the Fairy Falls event, we're going to be doing a number of small how-to classes and a chance to get hands-on in the small sandboxes learn the pond college standard as we share our pondless ranking sheet so you can recognize the finer points to naturalistic water features also what we've got coming up in november is wild waterfall walking in wales an opportunity to get inspired by mother nature mother nature has created this lovely sheet waterfall this trip is based over two days and you can join us for as little or as much as you want the next event would be it's December the 11th to the 12th, and that's our Christmas party, all based around learning. So we're gonna actually be doing an advanced build at that particular event. So come along and have some fun. It's all based around learning. Everybody is welcome to sign up, even if you wanna watch us professionals show you the latest advanced techniques. So the dates again for the events, we've got 16th of October for the Fairy Fall build, 13th and 14th of November for the Wild Waterfall walking in Wales, and then we've got the Christmas party, which is the 11th of December, and that's the advanced build. More details to come on that. So my name is Mark, the Pond Advisor, and I'm here to support you, dream plan, and enjoy ponds and water features. And until next time, I'll see you in another video.